beyond the terrestrial planets and beyond the asteroid belt lie four gas giant planets, the outer planets of our solar system. They are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, shown here at their correct relative sizes. The biggest is Jupiter, with more mass and volume than the rest of the planets of the solar system combined. Earth is the biggest of the inner planets, but as seen here, it looks small in comparison to Jupiter. Jupiter takes nearly 12 Earth years to complete a single revolution around the Sun, but it has the shortest day of any planet, completing a rotation in less than 10 hours. Its whirling cloud belts present a constantly changing pattern, but the Great Red Spot, a hurricane-like storm bigger than the planet Earth, has been there for over 400 years. planet Jupiter has an enormous magnetic field extending far into space. Near the poles, bright auroral displays are often observed in the cloud tops. Here, huge lightning storms are seen lighting up the night side of Jupiter. From the Earth, even a small telescope reveals the four large Galilean moons as they orbit Jupiter. These are large, significant moons that range in size from about the size of Earth's moon to larger than the planet Mercury. In order, starting with the closest to Jupiter, they are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io, closest to Jupiter, is constantly stretched by tidal forces, making it the most volcanically active moon. Here we see one of its volcanoes erupting, spewing material into the space around Jupiter. Second closest, and perhaps the most interesting of Jupiter's moons, is Europa, an ice-covered world constantly cracked by the tidal strain. Its tortured surface hides and protects a warm liquid water ocean, suggesting the possibility of life. This ocean is kept warm by tidal stretching and fed nutrients from volcanic vents. In the future, we hope to send a lander to Europa, melt through the miles of ice, and explore the alien world below. Who knows what we might find waiting there. Next up is the largest of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede. It is the largest moon in the solar system, larger than planet Mercury, and slightly larger than Saturn's large moon, Titan. Despite its large size, Ganymede is small in comparison to its planet, pointing out how unusual Earth's relatively big moon is. Unusual features on Ganymede include this string of craters. and this unusual groove terrain seen on parts of Ganymede. The outermost of Jupiter's four large moons is Callisto. The bright crater impacts suggest ice just beneath the surface. Concentric circles indicate a large impact occurred at the right side of this area. Jupiter has 63 named moons in all, but the others are smaller captured asteroid type objects. A few of them are shown here. In the 1990s, comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 passed close enough to Jupiter to be broken apart by tidal forces, creating the so-called String of Pearls. 
Eighteen months later, this string of comet fragments would collide directly into Jupiter. Scientists watched eagerly, not quite sure what to expect. The impacts were shocking. The impacts left a series of huge scars on the southern part of Jupiter, some larger than the Earth. The line of impacts can be seen in this ultraviolet image of Jupiter. The round spot near the top is one of Jupiter's moons. This infrared image shows the energy release from the largest of the impacts. After seeing this, the idea of comets and asteroids threatening the Earth suddenly seemed a lot more real. With the Sun obscured by Jupiter, we can see that Jupiter has a faint set of rings. Saturn's rings, by comparison, are one of the most beautiful sights in the solar system. Saturn, here showing an auroral display near the South Pole, takes more than 29 Earth years to complete a revolution, but it rotates almost as quickly as Jupiter. Saturn's rings give it an ever-changing three-dimensional appearance. The rings are so thin that when turned edge on, they nearly disappear from view. Here we see the ring's edge on, casting a thin shadow across Saturn. The black circle is the shadow of Saturn's big moon, Titan. Up close, Saturn's rings reveal an amazing amount of detail and structure. The rings are actually made up of countless tiny chunks of ice and rock, all orbiting Saturn in a flat plane. Since 2004, the Cassini spacecraft has been orbiting Saturn and greatly expanding our knowledge of Saturn and its moons. Here's a view of a crescent Saturn that we can't see from the Earth. These views show Saturn directly in front of the Sun. A close look shows the distant planet Earth. In 2011, a huge and unusual storm developed in the northern hemisphere of Saturn. One of the more unusual discoveries is this perfect hexagon at Saturn's north pole. Like Jupiter, Saturn has many moons. Some of the larger and more unusual ones are shown here in comparison to the size of the planet. Saturn has one moon far larger than the rest, Titan, continuously covered in a dense atmospheric smog. The Cassini spacecraft released a second probe named Huygens, which successfully landed on the surface of Titan. The Huygens lander revealed a world similar to Earth except that it was 300 degrees colder than the Earth. At that temperature, water behaves like rock and the oceans are filled with methane. This is a view from the surface of Titan. Much smaller than Titan, but just as interesting, is Saturn's moon Enceladus. Its snowy white surface is cracked open in many places, revealing the liquid water trapped beneath. Cold geysers erupt from these openings in the surface of Enceladus. Cassini has found the ingredients of life in these waters. Few scientists ever expected that Saturn would have two moons, Enceladus, shown on the left, and Titan, shown on the right, that would be prime candidates in the search for life. Other moons of Saturn include Iapetus, with its yin and yang 
mixture of dark and light surfaces. Ipetus also has an unusual ridge running along its equatorial region, shown here. This is Rhea, covered in craters and with a thin oxygen atmosphere. Rhea is also the only known moon to have a faint ring. This is Mimas. Its single very large crater makes many people think of the Death Star from the Star Wars movies. This infrared image of Mimas drew attention because people thought it looked like Pac-Man. Dione is interesting with the deep fractures running across its surface. This is Tethys, another medium-sized moon of Saturn. Saturn's small moons are not large enough to be spherical. This is Pandora. And this odd-looking moon is known as Pan. Hyperion, shown here, is interesting for its low density and spongy looking surface. Continuing outward from the Sun, we come to the next planet, Uranus, looking unreal with its nearly featureless blue orb. Special cameras reveal that Uranus rotates nearly completely on its side. And, like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus has faint rings of its own. Also, like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus has many moons. Some of the larger moons are shown here. Perhaps the strangest of Uranus's moons is Miranda with its fractured, broken-looking surface. Finally, we come to the outermost planet, Neptune. This planet takes several lifetimes to complete a single revolution around the Sun. Neptune has high winds bright, fast-moving clouds and dark, swirling storms. And, like the other gas giants, it has a set of rings. This spot was known as the Great Dark Spot on Neptune. It was believed to be like the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, but in recent years it has faded away. Neptune also has many moons. One of the most interesting is Triton. It has an atmosphere, high winds, and dark cold geysers that leave blemishes on the surface. This is Proteus, typical of Neptune's smaller moons. Beyond the outer planets lie many more objects, including Pluto and its big moon Charon, Eris, Sedna, and many others. These trans-Neptunian objects are not planets, but the first discovered objects of the Kuiper Belt. And beyond that lies a huge spherical region called the Oort Cloud from which an occasional icy object falls sunward, becoming a comet. <laughs>